Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm a physician assistant, uh, McMaster grad of 2015, and I currently work in maternal fetal medicine, high risk obstetrics at McMaster Hospital. For those that aren't familiar, how would you describe the specialty? So maternal fetal medicine is a subspecialty of obstetrics and gynecology um, that really focuses on obstetrics only. So um, we see patients that are pregnant and usually there's another comorbidity happening at the same time, whether it's maternal or whether it's fetal or it could even be both. Um, so an example of a maternal pathology that we see a lot, um, some of the common things are rheumatologic diseases in pregnancy. Many young women um, have things like lupus, for example, um, some people have cardiac pathologies, whether it's something congenital that the mom themselves were born with or something acquired later on in life. Um, we see a lot of type 1 and type 2 diabetes um, and their associated complications as well. From a fetal perspective, we see anything from you know, rare genetic diseases to things like uh, Down syndrome or different fetal anomalies that are associated with uh, genetic syndromes in general. And how is this patient population different than ones that you'd see in family med? Um, so, well, the big obvious thing is that they're pregnant. Um, so a lot of time, pregnancy is a big black box for a lot of care providers. Um, and especially if someone comes in with a, a medical disorder and they happen to be pregnant, I think that's an area of discomfort for a lot of other adult care providers or pediatric care providers. Um, so where maternal fetal medicine kind of comes in is that uh, we can bridge that gap uh, between the medicine and the, the pregnancy sort of thing. And what's your role as a PA within the special? So I have, I think, a pretty unique role as a PA uh, in maternal fetal medicine because I not only get to do um, outpatient, but I also get to do inpatient. There's actually two PAs, so myself and a colleague, that rotate back and forth um, doing inpatient and outpatient with the seven maternal fetal medicine specialists that are there at McMaster Hospital. In the outpatient setting, in clinic, uh, I'll see uh, usually new consults that come in. So I get to spend a lot of time with these patients uh, doing histories and physical examinations. They usually get an obstetric ultrasound before coming to our appointment, so I get to review that information with the patient as well. And lots of counseling and lots of education. Sometimes people aren't even sure why they're here in the high-risk clinic, so uh, I have to really start from scratch with that. I do also see uh, some follow-up uh, patients as well, so there is uh, continuity there. Sometimes I have to order investigations like genetic testing or blood work or uh, ultrasounds uh, for another couple weeks from now. In the inpatient setting, we have patients that are admitted to hospital um, because of potentially medical complications that are happening or obstetric complications. Uh, we'll round on them in the mornings and see how they're doing each day and make little tweaks to their management plan. Similar uh, things like ordering ultrasounds and doing blood work. We have people who've already had babies and they're postpartum, um, so I'll see them. And of course, we have people on the labor and delivery ward, so we'll see um, people in labor and follow them, um, and we'll first assist with cesarean sections as well, whether they're scheduled or whether they're uh, more emergent. We also have a little uh, triage unit, which I describe to patients as a mini emergency room for pregnant patients. So that's where the more undifferentiated patient might come in with something like maybe vague abdominal pain, and you have to sort of work them up from scratch. So different procedures uh, that the big one would be cesarean sections. So I'm often required to go to the operating room as a uh, assist with for cesarean sections. Um, and that's a skill set that, I mean, any PA can do, but uh, we were able to get a little bit of extra training specifically with first assist and cesarean sections. Um, so that's a role that I, I really enjoy actually. And we get to help out with uh, deliveries as well, so vaginal deliveries. Lots of other little procedures that happen that are specific to obstetrics um, and uh, specific to high-risk obstetrics as well that we help out with. I, I really like my role um, as a physician assistant in maternal fetal medicine because I think what I can do is I can spend a lot more time focusing on things like patient education and um, a lot of the little things that it might not be the main chief complaint that a patient comes in with, but when a patient comes um, uh, for the first time, maybe it's their first pregnancy, there's a lot of questions that, um, and a lot of, a lot of education that needs to happen. Um, and being able to sit down and focus on that aspect of things, maybe prevention, maybe smoking cessation, um, I think is really uh, useful and key for a lot of women going through a successful pregnancy.
going through, especially when um, there might be some bad news that happens. Um, oftentimes there is a longer conversation that happens with uh, social workers and a group of people um, about decision making in a pregnancy, for example. So I definitely play a role in that as well. How were you oriented to the service when you were first hired? Uh, so I was really lucky to have a fantastic PA colleague, uh, Jessica, who uh, started maybe six months before I did. So I had a great mentor to start out with, and I think that was a fantastic um, uh, help to my learning um, because I got to see what she did. Um, it also really helped that I was a student there before I started, so I sort of knew the, the workings of the clinic and the hospital before I started, and I knew what to expect. Um, What's the mentoring like between the PA and the physician? So in terms of the PAMD relationship, uh, we're very, um, uh, our, our MDs, the maternal fetal medicine specialists, are very involved in a lot of the patient care because it is a really high risk population. Um, so I always, I always tell people that with, um, and this is maybe my opinion, but with um, a more subspecialized area, sometimes PAs lose a little bit of autonomy, but I don't think it's a bad thing um, because uh, I'm working very closely with people with a ton of extra training and a ton of knowledge and uh, information about um, sometimes very rare you know genetic things for example um, so usually I uh, see a patient I do the initial history physical examination um, I'll order blood work I'll wait for that blood work to come back um, if for example, if it's at an inpatient setting, and uh, sort of put all the pieces together, and I'll start with counseling the patient or talking to them about the management plan. Uh, usually when I'm done that, I'll review uh, with the MD that I'm with, and they'll come in and always meet the patient before they go. The big thing that gets me excited, um, I would say, is the variety that I see. Um, so although every specialty has its bread and butter, um, I think uh, some days you will see very um, specific pregnancy complications, whereas some days we'll see um, more medical complications and, and really pregnant women they're adults, they can have anything happen to them, any pathology. So uh, going into work not really knowing what to expect uh, keeps me on my toes and uh, keeps it enjoyable. The other thing that I really like is the patients that I see. And I find with high-risk obstetrics, pregnancy is such a a special time for a couple and for a patient and having the added stress of a complicated pregnancy can be hard for people and I really value my role in being able to sit down and talk to patients and explain things maybe take a little bit of time to explain things even a second or third time until people understand um, and I really value that I can come to work and make a big difference in someone's life really because that's going to be a big um, thing that they're embarking on, which is a pregnancy. And what are some, what are some challenges um, that, uh, that you find comes with working in maternal fetal medicine? One of the big challenges, I would say on a day-to-day -day basis, is sometimes it's not, you know, the happiest area. Uh, sometimes there's very um, unfortunate, upsetting things that happen. Um, people get diagnosed with cancer at a very um, difficult time in their lives. Um, sometimes there's very bad news to give about a pregnancy that's not going as expected um, or even a stillborn baby. So uh, sometimes it is hard, um, you know, trying not to take that home um, and have that affect you um, can, can be hard sometimes. But you have to take a step back and realize that there's so much good that you're doing for these people um, and uh, this population that uh, really the good does outweigh the bad uh, for sure. Um, but uh, sometimes it is, they're quite difficult cases to see. Well, the PA role is still new here in Canada. How often do you get asked what is a PA and what do you usually say in response? Uh, when I'm asked what a PA is by uh, whether it's patients or other healthcare providers um, or what can we do, uh, I usually give a brief explanation of, of what I do and how I work. But I think it's, it goes to show that um, 
actually sitting there and talking to a patient or uh, giving them information, actions speak louder than words. I think if a patient is not really sure, if uh, they haven't had an experience with a PA before, telling them, you know, what my credentials are, uh, you know, only gets you so far. I think sitting down and talking to a patient and getting a good rapport with them and showing them that you have the knowledge and the skill set to treat them um, and gaining their trust from that perspective um, is the best way to go about that.